Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Home Real TV's Pyramid 9, now news and details. United National Party leader Ranil Wikrimer Singh has been appointed as the new Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. The 73-year-old United National Party leader held talks with President Kotabaya Rajapaksha on Wednesday and is expected to meet him again on Thursday. Wikrimer Singh, who has served as the country's Prime Minister for four times, was in October 2018 fired from the post of Prime Minister by then-President Matiri Pala Sirinsa. However, he was reinstalled as the Prime Minister by Siri Sena after two months. Sources said that he has the cross-party backing to head the interim administration, which is meant to last six months. Members of the ruling Sri Lanka, Potu Jana Pira Muna, a section of the main opposition, Samagi Jana Balawegaya, and several other parties have expressed their support to show majority for Vikrimi Singh in parliament. They said... Sri Lanka has been without a government since the last two days after his president Kotabaya's elder brother and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha resigned, making way to form an all-party interim government. Rajiv Kumar is set to take charge as the new chief election commissioner on Sunday. May 15, he succeeds Sushil Chandra for the top post in a poll body. In a tweet, Union Law Minister Kiran Rijitu said, In pursuance of Clause 2 of Article 324 of the Indian Constitution, the President is pleased to appoint Rajiv Kumar as the Chief Election Commissioner with effect from the 15th of May 2022. My best wishes to Rajiv Kumar. The appointment letter says Chandra is set to complete his term on Saturday. Rajiv Kumar is a 1984 batch Indian Administrative Service Officer. Naga People's Front President Dr. Sarozilia Lezitsa today declared that MPF is now disease-free party. Declaring this at the NPF Central Executive Council emergency meeting today held at NPF Central Office in Kohima. Dr. Lezitsa said, from now on, NPF will be able to move forward with accurate mathematics and move forward with full trust among the leaders. He also said that the NPF will continue its political journey to work and assist in any possible manner for a peaceful solution to the Indo-Naga political issue. In due course of time, four by elections and two MP elections came which means all these elections set one. There is 14 something and only one assembly constituency by election. We could not return our candidate, but we played our part well as a duty. In spite of all, all this setback, and PSG legislative group remain the biggest group in the 13th we also represent the personality of the Nagas. We stand to defend the original interests of our people, to protect our cultural life, our food habit, our languages, including our faith, etc. In Nagaland State, Another regional party is now in the making under the name and style Rising People's Party. It is hoped that this party will prove itself worthy of its name to the people of Nagaland. NPF legislator wing leader Kuzulu Azonina said that a time has come for the NPF party to adopt a motto, work more and talk less. Azo said that what has happened in the party was sad and bitter, but he urged the party MLAs not to recollect the bitter past and destroy future ahead of them. He challenged the party leaders to be broad-minded and put heads together and work on for the welfare of the party. New alliance is about adding one more enemy to our lives. These are the few changes in our world. I believe the time has also come for us to adopt a motto. 
work more and focus. All of us, from grassroots to the top level of the president, and all the remaining enemies, including our five enemies from Manipur, we should also start working more and start talking less. Right? If we are to remain complacent and behave in the same manner, enjoying, making many, drinking, playing cards, putting God in the second bench, then we'll be facing another catastrophe. Really, never. Awangbo Niumai, President and PF Manipur State Unit, also spoke at the meeting and assured fullest support to the Central NPF. The meeting was chaired by NPF Secretary General Achumbe Mokikon. They themselves to be merging with the other political party called NPPP. But for us, for this party, party has not been informed, party has not been consulted. <coughs> And therefore, there is no question of merger because party is still intact, including our four MLs. Friends and members of the Atlas House, I would like to encourage all of us that this four is a magic number for NPA. You know what? In Manipur, in the last government, the trained nurses association of india kohima unit today joined the rest of the country in observing international nurses day at naga hospital authority kohima gracing the occasion as the guest of honor nhak managing director dr Viputunio Mefu said that nurses play an important role in curing diseases and providing quality nursing care Dr. Mifu also stressed on the characteristics quality of nurses and urged upon them to rededicate themselves to render the services to the people. Everything, but at the same time soft enough to understand everyone individually. He can be both very strong, but soft. That is the characteristic of a good nurse. She is dedicated, compassionate, and patient. There are so many times where your patience is pulled to the limit. Uh, we all know. So, um, after seeing this characteristic of a good nurse, we realize that we are so fortunate to have nurses with these characteristics in our hospitals, in our state. We are so lucky to have you with all these qualities. We praise you for that. Deputy Director of Nursing, Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Sentina Ruao, stated that nursing is a practice of both knowledge and skill. Therefore, she urged the nursing fraternity to update nursing education and skills. International Nurses Day celebrate Grace. Annually, around the world on 20, uh, 12 May, it's a birthday of uh, Florence Nightingale. Uh, we celebrate International uh, Nurses Day to honor her in remembrance of her. Itu aru itai kiman kam kurishe itu commemorate to commemorate her efforts in the profession of nursing. Uh, we celebrate Inter International Nurses Day. Whenever they need our help, like giving injections or any advice, any health education, we are willing, we always uh, willing to do. Whenever we are free also. Hospital in the Holiday, God in Holiday, society, community, it to us. with dedication, devotion, and commitment. And our motto is to serve. So we should never cease to serve the humanity, even though it is retired. I am retired now, but I still feel the same. I'm still a nurse. 
Whenever people need my help, I still serve, I still voluntarily serve. Well, I would say that as we come in contact with the people around us, especially the patients, coming with our books and knowledges, we make sure that the theories and the practicals that we receive from our teachers were able to portray and give it back to our patients. One thing that I always remember while giving care to my patient is, I always remember how my parents take care of me when I am sick. So I make sure that I convey and give that care back to my patients. <laughs> Mokanje bi boy lagye, mokan jai na tai kanje kotha kurbo kule bi piche phali ja laga na. Aro mokan pra tai kanje kotha kurbo le mokan laga mokan pra rasta bi niche jai se kule tai kan upore jai jai. Na inika bi si COVID-19 time de mokan nurse kan bi si montu khushe aro mokan laga even mokan laga bacha mokan laga mota kanje bi discriminate ho bolle ho jai se na. Two Naga women entrepreneurs from Nagaland, namely Imli Ben Lamtor, proprietor of Monalisa Business Solutions Dimapur, and Tasankala Imchin, founder and CEO of Expression Life Dimapur, along with seven others, were selected. Alumni from the Northeast Academy of Women Entrepreneurs, first batch, were invited to the American Center as alumni mentors in Kolkata. They were given the opportunity to mentor the entrepreneurs in the pitch deck presentation and also participated as moderators in the panel discussion session. The AWE booth cam was conducted from for the second batch from Bihar and Charkhan at the American Center, Kolkata, May 4 to 6. I'm not paying anything for it. All I need is some time, some commitment, some good photographs or reel to market my products and it's doing very well. So um, that's where I am. But as I say, my online shop is going to be launched very soon. And I was actually hoping and wishing and was really trying my best to launch it here during this event. Okay, because I was doing that through the seed money given or gifted to me by the U.S. consulate. Yeah, so I was just hoping that, you know, if only I could launch it here, then it would have been a good name for the U.S. consulate, for Devia and the gangs. Obviously, for me, it would have been a good promotion. But, um, yeah, I told my developers quite late. I would really love to do the, uh, the, the exporting thing, but as of now, things are just okay with the online marketing I'm doing. There's so many restrictions when it comes to like loan, like, uh, especially mortgage, loan, or this, and so a bit very complicated when it comes to loan. So what happened is I went through all the things, and for me, I was like, I can I will only Mudra. Mudra is like from 50,000 to 10 lakhs. You can research in the earth. It's from 50,000 to 10 lakhs. Tarun, Shishu, and then, you know. So I got 10 lakhs. Uh, initially, Bento, they refused. And they were asking to me to bring my balance sheet three years. So I said, like, balance sheet, it's a startup. I'm starting. So when will the, I get my three years balance sheet? When I am asking for a loan to start. So that way I argued, and somehow like I like they were convinced, and I got ten likes. So what was the one thing that really you know helped you get the fund? It's all about awareness and knowledge is very important because bank will have thousand reasons to refuse. So what happens in India uh, when we do something here? Uh, we India in itself is a big market, and uh, what we are trying to export from India, there are a lot of people trying to export from India. As well. So it's, it's, it's also the interface on the both side. And what's funny is the fact that uh, uh, nobody understands how India as a market works. I mean, there is no formal channelized approach. I mean, as Ma'am was mentioning rightfully, when you are in Dubai, I mean, it takes some time, but you'll figure out that these are the licenses, these are the agencies, everything is defined in a way that I mean, there are rules, and then you just need to understand those rules understand the numbers that you have to commit before you follow those rules and then you're done and then you can actually organize yourself 
but it's it's very complicated. So, for example, even if you are in Devapur and trying to sell, let's say, to Bangalore or say for Chennai, at least thanks to GST, a lot of things have been simplified. Otherwise, the logistic itself was a big problem. So, why are we? I mean, how does it look like to export within the country itself? I mean, are there any challenges? That you have seen that okay from exporting your home product from your hometown maybe to the neighboring state or to the far side. Earlier, three women entrepreneurs from Nagaland, namely Visurita Krocha, the proprietor publisher of Pentril Kohima, Imli Bin Lemtor, proprietor of Monalisa Business Solutions, Dimapur, and Tasankala Imchin. Founder and CEO of Expression Life Dimapur was selected for the Academy of Women Entrepreneur in person Kolkata Booth Cam and one of them was awarded seed money for her business. The AWA was set up in 2019 by the Department of State's Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs, U.S. Consulate, Kolkata under the leadership of the Consul General Melinda Pavik. This is one-year program that was fully financed by the U.S. Consulate, Kolkata. In August, there is another training session lined up for North East Chapter for some selected alumni for English language program. The Nagaland Flower Growers Society has provided a platform to the flower growers by organizing three-day sales day at Indoor Badminton Stadium in Kohima. Gracing the event, Sonia Singh, IGP, encouraged the Naga women to engage themselves in the floriculture activities. This ambience, it makes our day. You enter a room and a good bouquet, good flowers, and you feel wow, you are loved. And I feel so happy to be here because it is giving, after very long, I am seeing so many flowers. <laughs> It's a bouquet and the decoration to go again. But this is something like huge gamut of flowers. Thank you, Arun. Indeed a pleasure, indeed a privilege. Anything ever police can do for all of you. We are there to serve you. Please do connect with us. Wherever I am required, feel free to connect. They have my number. Anything you are stuck up. Anything we can do. We are there for you. Stay blessed. God bless you all. NFGS Vice President Arinla Muzoi said that society aims is to provide and support Naga women empowerment through floriculture employment opportunities and income generation. She informed that most of the women have started earning by engaging in floriculture sectors, pushing economy towards development. One like to flower grow society too. It was sales day to second time class. I want to sales day to three days take a class. I'm here to flower growers to members to. 35 The Naglin Flower Growers Society and its members will continue to live as her legacy. Her untimely demise has been a tragic loss, but her sweet time with us and, and the influence of her presence has strengthened and uplifted us for the days to come. Joint Tribe Council and Joint Tribe Students 
Association on behalf of the four cognate tribe of Inpoi, Liang Mai, Rongme and Zimi today submitted a declaration to Chief Minister Nbiran Singh supporting the state government's war on drugs campaign by declaring drug and poppy free zone. The declaration reads that the indigenous four cognate tribes of Inpoi, Liang Mai, Rongme and Zimi had never practiced poppy plantation nor been involved with any kind of illegal drugs since time immemorial. The declaration further stated that following the sincere and righteous footstep of our forefathers, the four cognate tribes of Inup, Liang Mai, Rongme and Zimi reiterate our stand against illegal drugs and poppy plantation. The joint tribes are resolved to continue preserving, conserving the unadulterated forests, its resources and give life a valuable living. Addressing the media, Chief Minister Nbiran Singh appreciated the Joint Tribe Council and Joint Tribe JTSA for extending the support to the government at all times, particularly in the fight against drugs in the wider interests of the people. Full support on the ongoing war on drugs. And that they have decided to support the movement of the government against the poppy plantation and uh, against the drug business and that they also assure publicly to the people of the India, to the people of the state that in their jurisdiction, mainly in Tamilong and the Nune district, they will never allow, they never allowed in before also and in future also, they will never allow this kind of Hobby plantation and a drug related business in their areas. So I, I really want to uh, appreciate the leaders of the Joint Tribe Councils of these uh, two districts and uh, the women's uh, uh, leaders who came and endorsed the, their support to the government of Manipur movement against the war on the drugs. That's all we have for now. Keep watching on Real TV.